Amen. Great song. Good job, Tony. That's a great song with a great message. Amen. There's no doubt about it, folks. We've got all we need when we have Jesus. Amen. And this old world's going to throw some curves at us. So the world's going to uh, try to get us off, uh, off, off the road of, uh, that God would have us to walk. The world's going to uh, show us some darkness. But I'll tell you what, with Jesus Christ, we've got the light that we need and what we uh, are looking for. You know, this morning, I want us to look at a, a scripture that comes out of uh, the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians this morning. It's a, it's a scripture today of, uh, of the instruction from Paul to the church of Ephesus in, in, relationship, uh, to their, in relation to their discipleship, being good disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and I look out here today uh, in, in our church service, and, and, and I have this feeling, I, I hope you have the same one, and, and, I, and I'm sure that you do, but I, I have this uh, uh, feeling every, every Sunday, every Wednesday, I'm, I'm coming to a place. I'm going to a place. I'm driving here. I'm here. I'm getting out. I'm walking in. And, and, and here's what I know. I am going to be around people that love the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm coming into a church where there's love, there's concern, there's cares, there's prayers, there, there's disciples. There, there are those that are willing to, uh, to, to uh, uh, think about the rela their relationship with God. We get up in the mornings, we get ready to go. It should be an exciting time. In, in the lives of Christians, this should be an exciting time. This should never be a, an, a, a boring hour, if you will. There's a lot of folks that come and just say, well, I'm going to spend my hour here in the, in the church, for, and then I got to go. Oh, my. Oh, my. Did you ever miss it? Did you ever miss it, folks? I, I think about old church, and, and I can do that at my age. I can think about old church. I, I remember growing up in the church. Boy, we sing them songs. We had a choir director one time, brother. He sang every th song in four, four times, and he stomped his foot. I'll never forget that. Us boys, we stomped it right along with it. Y'all know we did. Oh, Listen. Old church, what was in old church that made it special? Believers in Jesus Christ, disciples, all people, folks that love the Lord and, and were willing to get up and say, it's Sunday morning, it's time to be in, in church, it's time to be in fellowship, it's the day that we go to church, it's the day that we go and, and draw close to God. I hope and pray that we never lose that excitement in Jesus, folks. Because as disciples, we should be so excited about Jesus Christ. I pray every service that we have here uh, is one where you feel the Spirit of God. And I feel it here this morning, church. I feel it here this morning. Oh, it just seems to me like, like, like the songs were louder than normal. There was more voices behind me as I sat here and hear you singing this morning. Oh, listen, I, I, I talked with you, some of you this morning about going to church and, and what your life has been like. And, and you're so proud of Jesus and I think we should be that way. As disciples, I'm leading into what I'm going to preach on here today, church, because as a disciple of Christ, it should be the most exciting time in our life, an opportunity to serve Him and be complete in that discipleship. If you found that uh, book of uh, Ephesians this morning, uh, stand with me as we look at chapter 4, and we'll pick up in verse 11 today. Chapter 4 of Ephesians in the New Testament there. And we'll pick up in verse 11. This, this, is the, uh, this is what I'm talking about. I say that God blesses us in so many different ways. Look what he says in verse 11, chapter 4. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children that are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things, which he is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by the, that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body 
unto the edifying of itself in love. Heavenly Father, teach us today from your word that we may direct our thoughts of, of becoming what you would have us to be. Oh, dialing in, getting close to you, Heavenly Father, being that perfect disciple for you. For it's in your name we pray, amen, and you may be seated. You know, as disciples, and we have to understand the, the word disciples, uh, we, we, is a word that we uh, can identify the discipleship with that is one that we allow Jesus to be the Lord of all, and a key word here, all areas of our life. Discipleship. We allow Jesus to be the Lord of all the spheres of our lives or the different areas of our lives. When we begin to understand discipleship, we understand these verses. Paul was lifting up the church of Ephesus to say, we have many members, we have many parts, and they are all for the edifying of Jesus Christ. They are for perfecting who we are as we assemble together. We can look at our church today and we can examine these words and we can identify throughout the congregation here different different uh, gifts that God has supplied. He's given some to, the, uh, uh, to be apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers. Oh, he's given us all an opportunity to serve him in some capacity. And that is to be complete as disciples. How do you get there? How do you get there? First of all, we have to understand who we are. It, we have to examine our own lives. I believe every day we, we should look at our lives and say, am I drawing to verse 12 here for the perfecting of the saints? Are we working for that unity that the following verse talks about? Are we ha do we have the understanding of who we are? Or we could get on personal with this, what we are, what we stand for. How do we, how do we uh, uh, deal with, with our Christian walk and our Christian life? Because listen, we're going to all different areas of life today, tomorrow. Tomorrow's a Monday morning. Uh, if the Lord uh, doesn't rapture the church, we're going to go to our normal places, whether that be work or, or, or school or, <clears throat> excuse me, or wherever that is. How will you react to it? Will you be different? Will you be uh, the kind of disciple in that particular area that God would have you to be? Will you stand up strong for Him? Will you hold your head up? Will you be proud to be a Christian? To be able to answer that question if someone asks you, are you a Christian? Are you a churchgoer? Are you, do you believe? Listen, are you willing to answer that question? Oh, it is the completeness of a disciple that is someone that, has follow, that is following and allowing Jesus to be the Lord of all areas of our lives, no matter where we are at. You think about being that disciple for, for Christ. Uh, Paul said you'll have many different uh, uh, gifts here, but there are for one reason, that is for the perfecting, in verse 12, the first uh, sentence there, for the perfecting of the saints. That's dialing in. I call it dialing in sometimes yeah, that, and getting close. You know, that term comes, uh, uh, and some of you's got guns. It may be from a, a scope. You ever dialed in a scope on a, on a gun? Y'all know what that's all about? There's a, there's a left and a right and an up and a down, and, and, and you, you shoot the thing, and you try to get it to this target, and, and you, you, can, uh, you can adjust it so the, so the uh, crosshairs, or uh, some of them, I've got one that's got a, an actual dot in the middle of it. You can move that thing around, up and down, or left and right. What are we doing? We are dialing in. We're getting close. And that is a, 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 a really a good analogy of a Christian's life. As we, monitor, as we look at our lives and, and we react in accordance to God's will and we do those things that he tells us to seek the perfecting of the saints, that is drawing closer to God than ever, ever before. Let me tell you something else about that, uh, uh, about that uh, uh, scope, on a, say on a gun that you dial in or uh, that you get close with. Did you know the next person that picks that up and tries to shoot it, it may not be right on target. They'll have to set the sights to themselves. I say that for a reason, church. It's not about you and I comparing ourselves to someone else. It's about what you and I do personally. It's not about someone else's relationship. It's about your relationship. Have you dialed it in? 
Has it gotten close? Let me, let me just make another point about that. I don't want to linger on about that rifle scope, but I'm going to tell you something else. You can turn it enough that it's no longer on target, but it now goes the other way. You can turn it enough, folks, that it'll get out of the picture. You can turn it enough where on oh, mine, with that dot, you can move it all the way out of the scope. You can move, listen, we have to be careful there. For if we are going to do what the Scripture is saying, and I hope that is what we're here, to let this speak to us today. This is God's Word. He's got a message for us. He said, some I have given to be apostles and prophets, some others evangelists, pastors, teachers. But what did I do it for? For the perfecting, verse 12 said, of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of of Christ. You see, church, it leads us to being that that we seek to be in 2021 here at First Black Creek Baptist Church, and that is a spiritually strong, healthy church. A spiritually strong and healthy church, just like we had on our overhead earlier. A spiritually healthy church, you see, and that progression, our growth is important in how we dial it in. That is seeking His will daily, you see. First, if we talk about discipleship, being a disciple of Jesus Christ, it involves a lot more than just church membership and, and church attendance. It, it does. It, it requires and, and it calls for us to, to get involved in a lot of the things that's going on in a church. There's opportunities of service here, right here at First Black Creek Baptist Church. Are you willing? Are you willing to do that? Not just be church members and church and in church attendance, but serving the Lord as disciples. Secondly, I believe as a disciple today, it, it, and, and identifying what a disciple is, it is a uh, it is a is someone that who is who is truly following Jesus. They have been changed by Jesus, and is now committed to the mission. Of Jesus, I think those are three very important elements of discipleship today. Let me give you one. Let me give them to you again. It's someone, first of all, who is following Jesus. It is someone who has been changed by Jesus. Let me just poll this group. Y'all, y'all not asleep? Let me get out of this light just a minute. Everybody awake? All right. Amen. Let me, I got this. Don't let me get that sign out that says Amen. Listen, have you been changed by Jesus? Hadn't He changed your life? Hasn't he just changed a lot? Did you get up this morning excited? And let me tell you something. I know this. You can get up in the morning time excited about Jesus. And guess who sneaks in a crack at the house? Old Satan. Well, now, you didn't you go last Sunday? Yeah, you know, didn't somebody came Wednesday? You know, what are you going to do? Go every time they open the doors down there? Folks, the fellowship of Jesus is important. The fellowship with Jesus is important. You see, have you been changed by Jesus? So the next question is, are you committed to the mission of Jesus? How do you know what that is? How do you know what that mission in your life is? How do, how do, we, how do we dial in? How do we get closer to Him? First of all, we have to go back where I started here this morning, and that is an understanding of who we are. You are. I am. That's most in key importance here, to, uh, of key importance today. Understanding who you are and I are, understanding what we are, and then using that, and then using that. Where do we start? Oh, listen, that's a pretty simple answer. Yeah, where does it start? Good discipleship. Where does this uh, seeking the perfection of the saints come in? Oh, how does it all happen? It happens when you and I decide we want to change in our lives. We want to do something different. I want to be closer to God. You see, there's, there's, uh, there's a problem. You have recognized it. There, there's a problem in our, in our life and our lifestyles today. See, the, the, we have taken on a role in our, in our world today as, as, as that there, there, there's two categories. There, there's the godly side, and then there's the worldly side. And when we're around godly people, here at the church, we act godly. And when we're out in the world, now we don't want the world to look down on us. They don't want to think we're freakish or cra crazy Christians, I call them. The world thinks we're crazy Christians. I'm glad to be one. 
But so we got two. We got two things we've got to deal with. We got our Christian side, and then we got our worldly side. And we, we say, okay, Lord, I, I, I'll, uh, I'll do all of these things as long as. Did somebody tell you that God was in the deal making business? My, I don't find that here where the Lord said, now listen, here's what I'll do if you'll do it. Here's why. Oh no, God just exclaimed. God, as, as the song said, He promises. He promises us, folks. He's going to. He's going to do what He has promised He will do. The question is, will we respond to it? There was a book out. Some of you may have, have, have read it. I, I, I have it, but I, I used an insert out of it. It's a book called, uh, on following Jesus that's uh, entitled, Not a Fan. You might know the book. But in that particular book, there were some terms that was used in, 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 uh, in, in separating our Christian life, our morally ethical life, a life that we should live based on the Word of God, and the life that we live out in this old world. And many of those questions that came up, uh, the answers to, to life itself and, and the world's way are not God's way. We're either a fan of God or we're not, folks. I thought it was interesting. You see, here's some of the things that that, that book began to bring out. We try to negotiate with God the terms of a deal. And folks, God's not in the dealing business. You see, I, I, we say it this way. Now, I'll follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus as long as it doesn't interfere with Fill in the blanks. Some answers there. I'll help you with them. As long as it doesn't interfere with, with my Wednesday, I can't go to church because, because it's the night that all the guys at work decided that's the guy's not out. I can't be in church on Wednesday because it's the, the girls say it's our girls' night out. But not, listen, I'm, 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 I'm churched. I'm a Christian. I, I'm godly. I, I, I won't be able to be there on Wednesdays because I've already got some predetermined dates in, uh, that's set on the calendar. I won't be able to go every Sunday because Sunday morning on the 1st is when the motorcycle gang gets together and we ride to the local bar and then we go somewhere else. The rest of the day, so that's just the first, that's just one. That's just one. But listen to me now. I'm, I'm, I'm God's child. I can't be there Wednesday, and I can't be there on the first Sunday of every month because I've got to do that. Oh, yeah. In the summertime, we rotate at the lake on the, with the boat, the skis, and the jet skis. I can't be there the fourth Sunday because, well, that's understandable. That's the Sunday that I'm supposed to bring all the snacks and everything. Folks, that's more important than God. If we'll continue in this process, we'll find out why there's empty seats in this congregation. If we'll continue, listen, you'll know where most of the congregation is here today. And it's got nothing to do with COVID-19. It's got everything to do with that we have established a ground. I'll only do this with God if I'm not too busy in this old world. And I'm telling you, this old world for a non-Christian, it'll send you to hell. And that's as clear as this old pastor can say it. If you're not saved... Folks, let me tell you, you're hell bound. Okay? The church may not ever be full because the preacher says it that way. But you'll have to live with it. For the truth is in that word right there. What excuse will you give not to be in fellowship with God? I've got all these preset dates. So if we're going to be today true followers of Jesus, followers of Jesus, We've got to put him, Lord, over our entire lives. Not a piece of it, our entire lives. You see, and I believe that is very important. I was looking at a, I like Charles Swindoll. Y'all like Charles Swindoll? His theologies match up very good with our beliefs, our teachings here. 
our preachings here. But he was talking about his separation in a story he, he tells, true story, of a man that was trying to live on both sides of that fence. He got himself in a pretty precarious situation. A man and his friend, a lady friend, went to a little restaurant and had ordered a takeout dinner, two of them. They went and picked it up. They called their names, and they went and got their bag of carryout food. They left that building and drove to a picnic site that they knew about, and they were going to have their takeout dinner from the restaurant working out pretty good. They opened those takeout dinner bag, that takeout dinner bag, and reached in. Folks, there wasn't plates or food in there. It was full of money. This, true story, this particular restaurant, the way they didn't conceal the fact of who was going and making their deposits, they put it in a regular takeout bag. So people coming in and out all the time with the takeout bags, nobody knew who had the money. And you couldn't track it. They realized, he realized, we got to take this back. And they did. It took a little while to do that. They got all the way back. And they walked in. And the newspaper was there. The police was there. Television station was there. They done heard about this money. It's the, what they robbed. They don't know anything about it. It's just missing. They can't find it. Don't, they're going to look at videotapes. They're going to check it all thoroughly out. And they began to say, here he is. He brought the money back when he brought it in. He's a hero. Morally did the right thing. Good guy. Did the good thing. And they said, come on over and let's get a picture. Go put it in the newspaper. He goes, oh, no, no. Oh, go put it on the television. Oh, no, no. <laughs> he gets the sheriff and the, and the local police together and the owner and the manager, and he says, you can't put us on the picture in the paper. That's not my wife, <laughs> which means I'm not her husband. You can't do that. Morally, folks, didn't he do the right thing? He brought the money back. But two sets of lifestyles, the one where we know what is right in the sight of God and the one where we have negotiated with him of how we really live. Folks, you insert any answer to that little analogy you want in life. What is it that you do that you know God is pleased with, but because you've negotiated with him on this, you feel like this is okay too? Let me tell you about a little three-letter word. It's called S-I-N. Folks, in the sight of God, it's right or wrong. It is sin or it is not sin. Amen? Amen? What do we do as Christians? Look what it says in verse 12. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. We all believe, have a common belief. We all acknowledge God. We all want to, are seeking the commands of God to be what he would have us to be. What happens with that? Oh, we begin to perfect the perfection of the saints in verse 12. In verse 13, we become a unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen, when we say, world, you've got to take a back seat. When we say, God, I want more of you. I want a closer relationship with you. I want God to be everything to me. I want God in my life, and I will not negotiate with God. I will go with God's commands and what he has commanded for his, for his uh, disciples. Oh, that we would be perfected. That we would be in unity. That we, look at verse 14. That we henceforth, we won't be children tossed to and fro. That little story, let me stop you right there. That little story I just told, do you see the tossing to and fro? Oh, we want to do the right thing, but we're living in the wrong scene. We want to do the right thing, but we're living in the wrong scene. Oh my, church, 
true disciples of God. It's time we get in this book. It's time to, that we realize that he's got the answers for us. You see, in that little book, not a fan, there's a couple of things that I mentioned that, that I want to mention here. You see, we go today to find the answers. And look where we seek to find them. If we ask about, uh, uh, about, our, our, about money or giving, a lot of times the answer will be, well, I work, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to just give it out at the church. I work hard. I, I'm, now, I might get a book on financial life, uh, may, maybe the, the Money Magazine. I'll read the Money Magazine. The Money Magazine, that'll help you. That's the answer. Oh, in relationships, instead of, of Jesus, we don't, we don't need all that Jesus. But we, we got Dr. Phil and Oprah. Can you imagine living your life based on answers from Dr. Phil and Oprah? And also in the following of Jesus. If we're talking about marriage, family relationships, we'll just get us a magazine from Cosmos. I'm sure they got all the answers. But you know what? I'm here to advise you differently than that. You want the answers, folks? You can turn the TV off. You want the answers, folks? You can get in this and find them. You want to get the answers? Clear out them old magazines that declare they know more than God. You see, I think today it's very important that we understand this. A faithful and growing discipleship, and that's what we're talking about, growing spiritually, a spiritually healthy church. I believe growing in a, uh, in a faithful disciple of Jesus is one that strives to understand all of God's commandments, that we submit to God's authority. Oh, that we see what Paul is telling the church. Listen, you have an opportunity right in front of you. Use your gift. Declare yourself as a, as a disciple for God. Make a better stand for him. Be what God would have you to be. That we know more, in verse 14 again, we know more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they live in wait and wait to deceive. And folks, that is summar that's summarized best I could ever put it, anybody could ever put it on this old world. It wants to deceive you. But you know, we need God. We need God in our lives, church. He's got a message for you today. He's got a message today as, as, uh, as life does get complicated. And I'm not going to stand up here uh, today in just a few short moments and tell you that life doesn't get complicated. It, it can be. It, it, the preacher said, and, and I understand that, uh, but I also understand what I'm facing and, and how am I going to deal with this and how am I going to deal with that. Let, let, let me ask you to think with me just for a moment. Each of our lives... I believe can be very easily summarized and organized in probably in four areas. So even though it seems so complicated, I believe if we get down to the seriousness of being good disciples for Christ, I believe it condenses a wide range of darkness in an old world that we live in into just four little areas. And we're going to be talking about these areas I can see it on somebody's face. I don't know if he covers every one of them. We'll be here at 4 o'clock. We might need to be. Amen? Sometimes we need to be church. But life gets complicated. And so much going on so fast and so much. Listen. Listen just for a moment. You see, I, I think the main areas of our lives should be condensed to, first of all, a relationship with God. I believe it starts there without a shadow of a doubt. I believe we should be able to recognize this is pleasing to my God. I believe we should recognize that by doing this, I have peace. By staying in His will and that relationship I have with Him, I have peace and, and comfort and I'm excited about being here on Sunday morning. Man, we ought to be excited about being here this morning. God's given us one more opportunity to join together and worship Him. 
Oh, I pray that pray, uh, uh, pray that we do that. So our relationship, our first step, I believe, to uh, uh, one of the main areas of our life of taking out the word complications and, and so much going on is to insert the word our relationship with God is the most important. The second is our relationship with the church. It's so important to be around the family of God. I started off by saying, folks, it's an absolute privilege for this pastor to get up every Sunday, every Wednesday evening and drive over to this church. I am, without a shadow of a doubt, going to run into somebody that loves the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that because you're here. I know that because you're here to worship. You're ready to praise his name. We're excited about Jesus. I'm excited about Jesus, folks. I am going to spend eternity with him. Tony, we sing an old song. Uh, 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 one of the verses on it says, leaning on the everlasting arms. That's what we can count on with God. Folks, he makes a promise to us. Just follow him. Our relationship with him and our church should be one where we're leaning as a church on the everlasting arms. I think a third, a third element there is the relationship at home. I believe we need to make a stand at our homes. I think we need to take that stand to teach our children, to teach those uh, in our homes, and, and to bring them up to know Jesus Christ. If you've got little ones today, oh, listen, uh, it may be children, it may be grandchildren, it may be great-grandchildren. Oh, tell them about God. Remind them of who Jesus is, what he's done for you. Tell them about your salvation experience. You know, even the littlest one. Folks, when you start telling them about your relationship with Jesus Christ and how you got saved, it's going to plant a seed. What does that mean? Oh, the greatest thing that can happen to you is to tell a child that you're saved and they won't know what he means. Maybe they'll ask you from what? Boy, those are key words. Amen? Those are key words. Somebody asks you, you tell someone you're saved and they say from what? Be willing to tell them. That is a disciple with a relationship with God. And the fourth element of that, folks, is a relationship and how we deal with the world. Are we willing to tell this old world, not today? This is what God would have me to do. This is how God would have me to live. This is what God means when he says we can have unity. This is what God means that I can be seeking perfection. This is what it means when I can be that light that God has called upon to shine on his behalf. Wow. Church, I just gave you a responsibility that we all must seek to be the light, to be the light that God has assigned you to be. It'll take you getting in this book. It'll take us getting on our knees. It will require us to have joy, excitement. Folks, it'll put tears in your eyes. There'll be things that we do that we break the heart of God and we know it. Listen, don't let me just put words out here. You adhere to them. Listen, there'll be things that we do that'll break the heart of God. And I say it's them. Folks, it is time for us to recognize that Get it right with him because he is a forgiving God. You see, that cross represents the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. He died on that cross that you may have everlasting life, that you may understand to lean on his everlasting arms. I'm looking forward to seeing Christ in heaven. How about you? Amen? But meanwhile, let's walk with him on earth. Amen? Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. How about you? Listen, I, I, I've delivered a few words. I hope I've made them clear. God's laid them on my heart that if we're going to be a, a spiritually strengthened church, a spiritually healthy church, folks, we've got to be good disciples of His. We, we've got to get our mind off of what's out in this old world and focus on Him. And when then, when, then when we do go out in this world, we take his words with us. As true examples, good disciples. Let him be the God in all those areas of your life. Let's start with them four. 
Let's be a spiritually strong church. Heavenly Father, I ask today that you be with us. This time of invitation is an important time. It's a time when we have to make our minds up. Oh, will we, will we adhere to your word? Will we be spiritually strengthened? And it starts with our relationship with you. We just outlined it, Heavenly Father. The beginning must be a relationship with you. Accepting you, believing in you, confessing we're sinners in need of you. Heavenly Father, opening our hearts and receiving you. If there be one in the sound of my voice today that knows you not as Lord and Savior, may today be the day of salvation. May they realize how simple it is to get on board. Because, Lord, they won't have to hunt you down. You are waiting to hear from them. Oh, Heavenly Father, for salvation, rededication, maybe there's a life here in our midst today. Heavenly Father, that says, you know what? I haven't been the disciple I need to be. I, I have lived on both sides. I have tried to, uh, 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 to negotiate with God. I, I have tried to, to not be what he would have me to be and, 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 and get along with everyone, and I have let the old world get in my life. Maybe it's a day of refreshing that commitment you made to him to be his child. Maybe you're thinking today, I need to do a better job with my home, my family. Maybe I need to get closer to God. For truly, Heavenly Father, we realize that you are the answer. Salvation, rededication, church membership, we ask you today, Heavenly Father, that you move in close to us in this time of invitation. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.